This is this is Augusta Ali, and welcome to Augusta Ali podcast, where we review wrestling, wrestling news, any kind of news, anything you want, anything you need that you want to cover. The podcast will be covering Nick Jackson making folks' appearance at AEW All Out. Mm-hmm. Then we also gotta have Duxon begins on a new AEW TV project related thing. Then we have the production about the Rock's Holiday film with Amazon Studios. And then we get, we've heard about top AEW star leaving Twitter after Elon Musk takeover. Then we go more further about Musk and Twitter going further. And then after that, we're going to be talking about FTR reportedly working in New Japan Wrestling Kingdom 17 and more. But first, let's start with a dynamite recap. Let's go. You claim FTR defeat Swear on Glory and the Guns. This was a good eight man tag. It was pretty good on the show. It was a great matchup. First start to a good dynamite. Let's go to the NJF promo. NJF appeared on the podcast earlier this week for Barstool Sports. And here's a clip from the clip. NJF say he talks about full gear, the important match in the industry. Because it crowns a new generation of talent. NJF calls himself a generation of talent like Bruno. Hogan, Rock, Stone Cold, Cena, Sentra. He thinks Moxley is a scumbag piece of shit that from the slums, but respects him. He respects all sacrifices, says Mox is the best wrestler on God's green earth. And when he says that it ends at full gear, because NJF is the guy who could do everything, TV, movies, talk shows, Zentra. NJF will bring back Paresa back where people can talk about it again. He is sick of when he turned being robbed of the spotlight. He talks about more about his first match being stolen by a neck tattoo. His world title match being stolen by My Heart's Fall. His return was married by press conference. He is grabbing the spotlight and come full sco- full gear. The the devil gets his due. Yeah, that was pretty much every NGS big promo and a podcast system. They did great. And now here's a big promo from Stokely Halfway. Your worst crime commit is Dick Riding. Without a license. Stokely Halfway talks about how he and MJF used to see eye to eye. Now he's just dick writing Moxley. He says he doesn't need a best friend anymore. See you in hell, Max. That's what he said. That was the, pretty much the whole segment. Alright, we got Ethan Page defeating Eddie Kingston to advance the semifinals of the AEW World Time Eliminator Tournament. Here's the ending. Page hit the Avalanche Eagles Edge from the top row. It gets the pin. What I think of the match... It was pretty good. It was hard hitting. Like Ethan Page got what he needed. And in Kingston it was looking good. You know. Alright, on with the show. Wardle defeated Audrey Devar to retain the TNT championship. It was a short match. During the post match, Wardle calls out Powerhouse Hobbs. Hobbs show up. Wardle said he's finally a set up opponent that tells him to gain the TNT championship. Then Wardle first said he'll take every time the company, and then he suddenly, fortunately, was attacked on by Samoa Joe and put in a rear naked choke by Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe's officially turned on Wardle. Then we got a hurt from Wardle, from, I mean, Hobbs telling Joe and Wardle they'll kick both of their asses. I see this as a big unification title match with Hobbs winning both titles. That's my opinion. I'm going with it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now we got this, the Brit versus Saria full gear nothing recap. Let's talk about it. Here's where Siobhan introduces his good friend Britt Baker. Out she comes. Saria shows on next. Sarah said, People are wondering, will I, will I wrestle? They did test this, unfortunately, for Britt. I am 100%, 100% clear. The emotion takes over Saria and she screams, AEW is my house. Then Baker says, Anything more fickle than AEW fan? Do you know how I do this? We aren't clear. I built AEW from the ground up. Superstars like you want to move into and I am down proud of it. The crowd chanted DMD. That pride turns to resentment when you skip there and call it your house. I call it five years like a single brick. <laughs> like, I know you're obsessed with me. I am everything you wish you could have been. If you think I am lying, let me remind you. You left your house walking into your mind. I regret to inform you. We don't take walking. The bitch make an appointment. Mm. Saria so replies, I think it's cute considering you got everything given to you by Tony Khan. You only been here three years. I've done it 17. You have no idea what it takes to be a star. You're a superstar. She got hit 
she got hit by a car. Russell the same day I handled resumes and turned down when I was filled out. I got MSG02, the Tokyo Dome. And now I'm in front of a grateful bitch. You know what it takes. She talks about being publicly humiliated and battling drug addiction publicly. I get my career and neck for this business. This is the biggest match of your career. You and me in full gear. Saria dropped the mic and they stared out. Britt tries to throw a cheap shot, but Saria challenges her hit Paige Turner. That's one of the best women segments I ever seen. So that was pretty much for that was a Saria Britt segment. Yeah, that was pretty much. Mm-hmm. All right, we got the Jay Lethal versus Barrett. Like we had the Jay Lethal versus Trent Barretta match. Basically, Lethal defeated Barretta by pitfall. The end of the match when when Trent was setting up for some storm might move, but Sanjay Dud was on the apron. Hanson ch- curses Sanjay, but Sam Singh lays out Don Hanson. Lethal with a legal gesture for the win. For the post match, we got Jet Jerry comes out and says, After millions of views of my debut, question why? A friend of calls your friend shows up. Then Jet Jerry talks about the history to Lethal, John J. Dunn, and so giving nod to Google Force as well as Impact. He praised Sanum as being legit giant, calls out fake giants and rip skinny jeans. Jared praised Sanum and the accomplishment of being the only Indian player. He talks about putting people in potty bags and cusses a guy off winding up for a time. For time, Sanam is some fake moss and red skinny jeans produced by the same Bernana Snow Circus. So Jet Joy took jabs at Braun Strowman and WWE. So this is the fan shot of Vince John Moxley who said he met the devil. So this was the Moxley promo. All right, let's go back to what Jet Jarrett said. Yeah, this was a shot at WWE. Jet Jarrett said, but Jet Jarrett has his reasons, and let's leave it at that. This is good build for a full gear match. <laughs> <laughs> Jared Lethal versus Sting and Darby Allen. All right, let's go to the promo. Let's do a new one that I talked about before. Moxley. Here's a recap. Moxley said, "Sir, when you ring hall was when I was 25, 26. I was young, full of piss and vinegar, and no arthritis yet. I thought I figured out. Right, my mouth wanted to be feared, respected like you. So you get that. I picked the fight with you, and it goes so well. You tortured me, you kicked the hell out of me, and pissed me off." Work harder, grow and evolve. When I had a shot, I knocked you out with a knee, rip your ear and ear off. You find out on the ro- now you find out the real work begins. It Mox says reminds him of NJF. He talked about the first match how he how he beat him bad and I don't know where he stood. Now it's full circle in the first time. Who is NJF? You know the rich fake PC penny clean guy. Big ch- time big champ time champion. I imagine a multi millionaire multi champion. Mox said MJ calls a pillar when I never had to wait. You thought NJF said NJF called himself the devil. I have seen the devil. I have met him. I looked at his eyes. I've seen been bad places. I've seen bad people do bad things. You're not at all. You know, I want you to fulfill your potential. When you step in your ring with your hometown, and gear, get everything you've done has been easy. Not this. This was the Moxley promo. So Moxley the promo, NJF. It's going to get bigger. So I get why it's going to be good. Uh-huh. Yeah, the match is going to be great. The cell will be bigger, full gear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We don't need CM Punk. That's all I'll have to say. All right. We got a JD Hater defeating Sky Blue. It was a good short women's match. It's all you need. Hater versus. Mm. Oh, yeah. A story story for the AOU Women's World title. Sorry, I'm a little distracted. Backstage, Archer takes out Ricky Starks. So the match will be held probably next week. I see that happening. There's nothing we can do. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's go to the main event. The Tower Three Falls match. Dancer def- versus Seven Guevara. First fall, Dancer won by DQ. Second fall, Guevara by pinfall. Third fall, Dancer won by submission. So Dancer won the whole Tower Three Falls match. It was a great main event. It put things together prospectively. You know, those matches are pretty good. It had a great point and stuff. Yeah, pretty much. So, here are my thoughts on this whole Dynamite episode. Like, productive show heading into full gear. The ring with action was enjoyable. Even though I have a few question quibbles about the larger picture, it wasn't enough to track from the overall entertainment. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on Dynamite this week. I mean... From the whole fun this week, dynamite. So yeah. 
All right, let's go to the news. Okay, Nick Jackson makes first appearance at, like, mm. all right, first appearance at, oh, yeah, all out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. Honestly, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Young Bucks went quiet since all AW All Out weekend as the investigation wrapped up following events at the media scrum. There's no word from Matt and Nick. He's had publicity, but Nick Jackson made his first public appearance last night at Los Angeles Clippers game. Jackson is seen a video toss his shirts in the crowd. He said he was guessing that TSA is a hometown athlete. It's the latest sign that Brother will be back on AW TV soon. On the past AW web episode of Dynamite, AEW aired a video featuring Kenny Omega Bucks that lured to their disappearance from TV. Nick and Omega have been backstage at Dynamite for the past couple of weeks. They'll believe that they will be involved in a full year pay per view that is not confirmed. It's true. It means that we will see them very soon for the next week. Dynamite is not going home show pay per view. So, so that is basically Matt and Nick will be at the go home edition. So that's I see. The production begins on a new AWT project. Production has begun on new to AWT projects as reports at PWS reports approach to start filming for a new reality series that produced for Warner Bros. Discovery. Per report, a camera crew is filming wrestlers backstage at AW Dynamite Baltimore Rampage in New Jersey. The new series will focus on behind the scenes elements of the promotion group experience of some of the talents that will be focal point. There are no words to open your project again. Again, the series will mark the second reality show for the company following Road to the Top, which the sixth episode of the first season in 2021. It was expected to be new for the second season until Cody or Brandy departed for all of you wrestling. Yeah, basically, we're going to, AW going to have their own reality So It's basically going to be a documentary of how AW is built upon, and that's pretty much how you need. All right. That's what it is AW production. Mm hmm. Okay, now we got the production begins on Rock's holiday film for the Sun Studio. So Rock's gonna have a holiday film titled Red One. It's gonna start production on today, according to Deadline. This week, the film star Johnson, Chris Evans, reported that notes that J.K. Simmons, Bonnie Hunt will join the cast playing Santa and Mrs. Claus. The movie will fill the 2022 or planned 2023 holiday release. The Rock comment on news by writing a, writing a new following. Chloe Chris Evans fellow fans for a payback. Chris is called Pick Pickup, just for Chris Franchise. Run 1, directed by Kaysen. Kaysen, to my franchise. 7 Bucks Prime by Video, The Rock, Day Garcia, Hir Hiram Garcia from 7 Bucks Productions. Uh, and the Seals will produce the film. With Chris Morgan, who produced Dishes for Susan Scrap. The Morgan. Worked with The Rock on the Fast Furious spin-off movie, Hobbs and Shaw. Caden worked with The Rock on the Jim I franchise. Jai's. Mm -hmm. So, the top AW star on Lee's Twitter on the Elon Musk takeover. Elon Musk takeover. AEW's payment page become a latest front of an daily Twitter following Elon Musk takeover. It's must be good acquisition social media giant April 2022. Chloe purchased last month. Pay told the fan he would delete Twitter for his phone. Join AEW Hall of Fame Mike Fuller and remove himself from the platform. The former AEW World Champ is celebrated by Instagram has over 227,000 followers. That was pretty much, yeah. Foley hated Paige to remove himself from Twitter. It was better to happen. You know, honestly, like Elon Musk pretty much has shitty done, done a shitty job with Twitter. That's pretty much it's going to be. So, anyway. Okay, let's go to the other stuff. We talk about Musk and Twitter. Speaking of him, okay, Musk's time running the site has been mirrored in controversy as it faced backlash for Twitter bluff idea, blue idea, which changed users from their accounts verified. As a criticizer of resentment of several banned accounts are very fair open up risk of misinformation being spread. Despite previous claim that Twitter should be periodically neutral, Musk has encouraged U.S. voters to vote a particular way in 2022 many term elections. The billionaire is also permanently suspending accounts and site advocating free speech. While Musk has claimed that accounts and personal auditors made it clear that par our parody accounts are safe, accounts that follow the rule when parody has been banned. So, that's yeah, Elon Musk is looking out for himself. This is his Twitter now, he can do the fuck he wants. It's Twitter. 
Yeah, so all right. Now we got FTR working poorly working at New Japan Pro Wrestling Kingdom 17. So FTR and FTR are poorly set to involve New Japan's biggest show of the year, Wrestle Kingdom 17. FTR and the current IWGP Tag Team Champions have a recently defeated the belts versus Jeff Cobb, Great O'Conn, New Japan's Battle of Autumn show that took place on Saturday. Been a lot of talk about a possible show for AEW talent, talent to appear on Wrestling Kingdom show. Like FTR now, the first AEW talent to be ported, expected to do so. So that's Hardwood, Cash Wheeler, expected to put their IWGP Tag Champions on the line versus winner of the up. New Japan will tag league participants, including Alpen, Tessa Naito, and Sonata, who are similarly the two favorites to win the tournament. FTR, of course, have already faced off all the open this year. I must defend their IWGP tag belts to get them in London on the New Japan Royal Quest Show. I match with very high praise by many. A second match with the two teams at the Tokyo Dome is fairly a aesthetic prospect. So this is what I, so this is basically FTR going to defend the tag belts at Wrestle Kingdom 17. They will be on Dynamite. It's understanding. So anyway, so yeah, basically like that. All right. All right, now we're gonna review Rampage. All right, here's a Rampage recap. All right, let's start with Jungle Boy Christian Cage with the Soros segment. Christian was out with Luchasaurus. The man in Jungle Boy came out so he could hear what he had to say. Jungle Boy said he lost everything thanks to them. Eventually, he challenged out Luchasaurus to a steel cage match at Full Gear, which was accepted. Cage started assaulting Jungle Boy. Mom and Dad led to Jungle Boy grabbing by the throat. Luchasaurus attacked. Jungle Boy shoe and fly eventually choke slam Jungle Boy through a chair. Ch Cage has set up. This was a good segment. It was pretty good. Yeah, that was a good segment. We're gonna have Jungle Boy versus Luchasaurus in a steel cage. Yeah, pretty much. Brian Cage with Chris Nana defeated Dante Martin to advance in the AEW World Title Eliminator Tournament. That match was pretty good. It showcased Dante Martin's skills. And Brian Cage was a big hoss. So honestly, since the return to AEW full September, Cage's 2-2 two two singles match was the loss to the TNT Champion Warlow and ROH TV Champion Samoa Joe, respectively. If you have been missing Martin, this is his first Rampage match since the late September Battle Royal appearance, as it implies his trade on Dark, dark Elevation frequently. So honestly, this was a solid match. We you know Power vs. C by Maverick was going to play out. Martin hit a top pay when Cage caught him and held him in a suplex position for jumping in a press of spot. Okay, mm hmm. Martin hit a press of button jump, big jump over the road to outside, Fox Bash on the inside. He wasn't enough. Hit weapon X to get the pin in advance against who? Honestly, yeah. R Ricky Stark is going to wrestle next week, so let's, let's agree to that. Mm hmm. Lee Martin and Mariah Stokely halfway were backstage. Mariah said he wants any champion at W Champ Hook walked in, stared and left. That would appear to be a honestly to be a pre pre show match of full gear, but I don't think it was an announce, so let's see. Anyway, we got some Claudio Casanoli was talking to Ray Perget backstage. Jake Hager entered the frame. He tried to in intense chase. And that's an only answer going back to sports entertainment or in her roots before leaving. He really likes his hat. It's kind of chaotic. Like, like the Jericho appreciates side side manipulate Casanova. He, like, he, he, manipulate Casanova to join their group, but Casanova is not having it. So, yeah, pretty much there. Mm -hmm. All right, Bandita defeated Roosh with Jose to advance in the AW Women in the World Title Eliminator Tournament. This was Bandita's first match since his debut against ROH champion Jericho last month and first since he signed the AW contract. Roosh read two singles action and was looking for his first one since late September Rampage went through over John Silver. This was slow for a while while Roosh Madaki worked down Bandino, attacking him before the match using a cable to choke him on the outside of the ring. Bandito hit a few big dives, stomped to the outside of our Rouge were getting control of again. During the match, the crowd got on Rouge, Shanty Dose when he got near falls and mocking. Both Bandito and Rouge really worked the crowd as well, getting them to chant 10 Spanish. Bandito was working Rouge over. Bandito didn't do any press big spot, but then that equally press press slam that crowd like. 
We got Jose using a rough strat to attack Bandito with brought out John Silver. He laid out Jose and Bandito used to actually get a little roll up win on advance. So Bandito will face Ethan Page next Wednesday in the semifinal. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Ricky Stars versus Lester Lance actually never happened. Before Rampage kicked off, Tony Khan said something had happened when he was going to show us. That was Archer taking out Sharks backstage. That would never fully a match when announced was unhappy that it wasn't means for tomorrow tournament. So the match will happen next week on Dynamite, pretty much. That triangle went backstage and Pat urged which is runners to try to take an opportunity to get Trio's title if necessary. Taping hammer against the title belt to punch with the point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. This was that triangle we were talking to Pac. It was about tight triangle angle talking to Pat, urging Lucha Bros. out every opportunity to treat the title by every necessary. They tap in the hammer against the title belt to put you at the point. <sighs> Lastly, Pac is turning heel. That's what I see out of this. Nana Rose, Maria, Rivera defeated Kayla Sparks. Rose won quickly, and this was set up a brawl between her solid champion Gargill, Shafir Baddies. Gargill took out Rose with her pup kick. Carity eventually pulled him apart. The crowd was pretty deaf for this. It should have been live, honestly. Yeah, it should have been live. Mm -hmm. The AD of Olaf, the champion, Arch Cassidy, her best friend, that hasn't defeated Lee Johnson in the factory to retain. You can probably imagine this match in your head. There was a ton of interference shenanigans on the outside of the ring. Colorado dropped Cassidy in front of around one point. QT Marshall probably dropped her dad has on the ring steps. Like, yeah. After more interference, everyone getting involved. Cassidy survived some Johnson's super kicks and hit the breach break counter to get the win. Afterward, Cole Carter was taken out by Arch Punch and Marshall backed away to look at the scene. Carter was hugged by Cassidy and best friends getting a triple T. Choke slam power bomb to end the show. So yeah, that was to end the show. Like Rampage was a pretty good show. And end the show on a good mark. And basically, yeah. Alright, let's talk about Nick Aldis giving his side on the issues with Billy Corgan while he was embarrassed to the end of the party. Let's go to the interview. During the interview with Sam Roberts, not Sam Wrestling, however. Aldis gave his side of the story on the issue with Billy Corgan's NWA. Aldis says giving his notice that they would not tell him to bury all their product. He said he gave the notice, alluded to why. He said it was a tendon sort of, you know, burial, and then we would say like that. What do I do? What do I just bury myself? The thing that I'm heavily associated for the last five years. Yeah, he was basically associated with some of NWA power stuff. On why all this left, he moved away where I want, he wanted it to be. What is coming now is not what I envisioned it to be. So that was a laying the groundwork for it. It didn't have the color values that I tried to sort and maintain. Again, this was a knock. This was me going. This is not me anymore. I want to do an alternative wrestling brand. I represent all the things about NWA. Missed out on the current product. Whether it be some of our production or you know, a different mentality, different style. Like, I get them all these things. Where, like There was a good portion of the audience, particularly in the South. He was wrestling. It was like, like I want to be burgers, fries, and red, white, blue wrestling. Because I love that stuff. Because it wasn't because it was like, I hate I spotlight and sports entertainment. No, it wasn't. It was more like, from a business point of view, and a gap in the market. I need for this type of product. When I influence this order that make happy, I said, we serve everything. There was a vision and it worked. So, what he felt that direction and the way it changed. So, 73, the first Lewis Lewis show was kind of like, once the business was a trash and it was never going to say, here's the thing, the first thing anyone's going to say that, sure, Benny would say, oh, because he wasn't champion anymore. And I realized, prior to that, I always steered the ship because the world title angle was also like any promotion. World title angle should be a wonder. And it's a promotion. I worked very hard for the last three years. Like, even before doing Cody, I treated the belt back and forth. I was still the nigga, but I really worked hard to make sure that every time I was involved in a old tight angle, you know, I was meaningful. It means something. Because I was a help. I was always driving the force. I was something pulling the wagon. When I wasn't a pitcher anymore, for all the time, I was said, I might be a different time for a switch here. It's different day to present themselves. Hey, Lewis, Trevor, Holly Ray, you know, all the chase, you know, all the opportunity to present themselves. There's a moment like there's a piece of business to be done. It was kind of my baby. I hate getting these pieces. Pissing contest with an idea. Angle was kind of like a baby, kind of souped to nuts. The whole thing, I just knew enough 
to like earn up to very important so but not about losing title it's what you do after so i have the whole thing in place here what i can do next i'm going to just find my Tom. Tom can turn on me because i'm not his meal ticket anymore i lose the belt now i'm no use to him i turn baby face and i knew i wasn't I was coming so you know what i mean i could tell it's so much of goodwill sentiment kind of people know what i'm doing you know, I sort of knew it was getting harder to continue hating. So when you know the time is right, I'll be sympathetic. Karen, I lost in the middle of the ring, you know, and I started past toward past towards the business. I did business. So basically, he was saying uh, he wants to do wrestling a certain way, his own way. That's what you want to do. So it's us for him. So it's more to this. Fast forward, we go to New Year. I can't sell tickets. So you can't imagine what should we do. The only person I trust, I guess, really acquisition. I now you're forcing me to advocate myself. You could be twisted, manipulated against any at any point. I just went through the question, what's different now? You're forcing me to give you an answer off of light. The difference you had in a world time angle that like people were interested in. Now you know, you know, or else I could tell you that. That's what led to Cardona. Then me and Cardona were gonna like decide, let's let's stretch this out. Like let's get this going. Mac got hurt, then again it was kind of an I knew it all fell apart again. Pelican. That's where I didn't have screw where it's kind of it suddenly turned into, well, you advocated your, to get the belt back. And I kind of went, whoa, whoa, hold on. I made a point where we had initial conversation to include Pat and make sure it was never one on one, something could happen. I kind of went, this is exactly what I was afraid of. So, you know what? I'm bowing out. Do what you want. On why he was signed with contract in January. I signed a one year contract. Truthfully, it made me a nice offer in favor of terms. I want a bitch. It was time for me a deal to come to an end. So, if I want to exit the deal, which will really continue on a month by month basis, not I six, give it a 60 day notice. And they want to end the agreement, they have to like uh, give me a 90 days of notice, which is advantage for me. They put me in. And not men, which is like great, that's nice, appreciate that, you know, and Mr. Bloodfire of Gills go pro wrestling. Like, honestly, buddy wise, like AEW compared to WWE or AEW in terms of structure, and one of the fairest agreements, or the fairest agreement I ever signed in wrestling. One year in that bonus factoring and production stuff. So that's why I gave it, why I gave this notice in November. It was the only time I would have been able to do that. It was a situation where, okay, we agreed for one year. Where I would wish to end the agreement, I give it. 60 days notice. The only possible time I could try to do that was November the second time. The day I did it was trying to brush my about. I typed out the letter and sent it a copy to my agent. As far as I was concerned, like, I decided to let my phone know my pants on. I was on a pipe bomb and sort of situation. I was just like, hey, let's, let's see what's coming up next. I don't want to live my next my side for the future. Basically, you want it out, and now he's excited for the future. So here it is. So, what if he was better than the product? So what he said is, look, I can't around, yada, yada, yada. I didn't mean to pass the Harley race test. He started looking at stuff at Gaps to Gib, you know, a social dissident match or two of us, you know, bullshit matches. How I would judge the ride to Harley race, Harley would have hit today. Imagine if I stood over Harley race. What would Harley say, watch, or do for a fuck or a flirt, though, if I stood over these guys right now? I mean, I'm kind of embarrassed because... Because they look at me and say, this is your day. I had to go, no, I don't want to be positioned like, no, that's not me. So what he says, I've already puts the percentage of the star. So I either wear the suit, I carry some certain way, percent so sort of when, you know, about to work a rest center in front of 100 people, so there's a different level of courage, right, to be that like the man. You think there were times when I feel like complete buffoon, I think that's 100 minutes away, away from WrestleMania. But I noticed that the whole point of business again is like old school dinner driven to me. Guys like Harley and Dory. It starts in here, believe it, and you believe in it. So, yeah, this is Nick Alder's big interview being released for the NWA Power, suspended, whatever. Yeah, he's probably going to WWE. It's fine, but, you know, all this does what he wants. It's Nick Aldis. He does what he wants. Alright, let's go. There is some backstage heat on WWE's Braun Strowman. Recent comments, you know. You know, the recent, the heat on Strowman was really real after the recent social media comments. Several we'll stars, including Ricochet Moot Fasta, took to Twitter, socially mocked Strowman's tweets. As well as to do high fly moves, others who are not in WWE, such as Jericho, Will Spread, Keith Lee, Will Ospreay, others had con as well. Needless to say, there are people who are around the business wrestling, but are not in agreement with Strowman. Then we got a fight for select report today as Strowman. Reported to speak that Strowman has been on his best behavior while backstage since his return to WWE. 
But social media broadcasts and other stories, WWE managers said to be aware of it. I suspect that uh, one person in the company said that WWE is uh, to the an immature approach. It was noted what Sherman said was part of an angle story, but it was such that Roman could be ribbing or referenced on commentary for his stance. One wrestler said that Twitch didn't happen and Sherman didn't have to come up in the business doing high fly moves so he thought I should understand. Story was a news game why he was referencing AEW Dynamite or Jeff Jarrett. For those who don't wonder why Jeff Jarrett said why he said, check out an incident involving 2017 between Sherman and Jack- Karen Jarrett. Yeah, pretty much Strowman's doing stupid tweets. Honestly, Strowman's a fucking idiot. He makes stupid ass tweets. Something he could do. You know? I don't fucking care. Alright, Bandito reportedly signed a three year this week, a year deal with AEW. Reason for turning down WWE reveal. Let's get to that. Following the press of the show running against Jericho on September 28th edition Dynamite, Dave Smeltzer of Wrestling Server Newsletter reported Bad Needle has been offered an AEW contract. Although it wasn't until recently that Meltzer confirmed that two parties had agreed to terms that likely due to interest coming from WWE. Meltzer uh, provided further insights on Bad Needle's and the AEW deals. Show you something like why Mexican star ultimately chose AEW over WWE. So he could, we could, could, he confirmed that the deals were three years have massive number of dates. We don't have a number, but it's more matches than you know, AEW wrestlers, wrestlers working in a year now. So that should be an issue, but that could change if you do house shows. In the end, he realized he couldn't sign with WWE because he got a child in Mexico. His significant other doesn't want to move from Mexico, doesn't want to, not to see a child all the time. Working for WWE when he on the next year first would require to be based in Florida. We got to the main roster to be away from him more than an AEW. So, yeah, Brandy has missed the appearance that AEW is good for, for t- tonight's, ramp- tonight's Rampage, which was was Rampage this week. I already told you what Rampage was. It will be taking on Rouge, up and around a World Time Eliminated Tournament. The winner of the match will take out Ethan Page next week, who defeated Geeks on this week's Dynamite. So, let's go further. The, the finals will take place at AEW Full Gear Saturday, number 19, with Venture Tasha schedule to take place on December 14. On the other side of the bracket, Archer will face Ricky Stars with the winner of the match facing Ian Darte, Martin, and Brian, mostly Brian Cage. Uh huh, yeah. Now we go to streaming. Human streaming trend could affect WWE AEW business deal next year. AEW has approved quite a few last few three years that are likely to change time soon. Time of streaming deals for AEW continues to discuss, even in fact, a huge streaming deal could affect AEW's business deals. As reported, OWN, Thursday night NFL games on SR Prime are forming at least level, same level of 1849 double there. Friday night games on SPN. They must have known this trend more than as a key audience for AEW and WWE could easily be kept busy on Amazon Prime and Love Car Parable TV Network. At an important note, ready to WWE and AEW business deals in 2023 that Thursday night, little games on Amazon Prime are almost doing the same at 18 and 49 and then games on SPN. Easy to do more for more views because over for the audience. That was expected. But tell you that if you're AW audience, you'll get your key audience if you move to Amazon Prime, which is a scary part of move to stream. So before like before fear and makes a move if they pay more it will hurt you to do less viewership or companies viewership more possibility for live shows, merchandise, public perception. It, it's something that it can affect both WWE and AEW with next year's negotiations. It can affect WWE and Netflix is looking at getting like live sports. People have talked about this for years. So we got Nick T- Khan talked about things behind the scenes happening. He got a minute what happened. Media sports reports being from Wall Street Journal. Noted that Netflix has part of purchasing World Surf League and broadcasting the events of all this. Several tour, tour, tour events. The quote by SI said in sports is the baseline now. We don't find the right priorities, like really the priority, but it's always a question of the right deal. The right deal. The entertainment landscape team just ship that one company by another. Find an endless media conglomerate. Only time will tell any what networks in question 10 years from now. And that's it. WWE, AEW, or not. Ever change the environment and prepare for new distributed deals. Well, the way and see when AWW affect it affected a new idea fans will not be happy out this year. 
Yeah, pretty much. Honestly, streaming deals are important. So, yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. Jericho believes Logan Paul is good for business. Alright, okay. Uh, okay, let's get to that. Logan Paul shot the fans. This match with Miz at SummerSlam for metal fans all over the world shocked Holy Rose at the feud of Roman Reigns. In fact, even Jericho believed Paul was good for business. Logan Paul took Roman Reigns off to limit their crowd drum match. In fact, there were instances when the fans believed Paul could actually beat Reigns. That didn't happen in the end as Paul lost. The Maverick managed to win over the fans for rest of life while speaking to the Holly Mandel. Jericho, Jericho stated he believes Logan Paul is good for business. I think it's great that it's also that anytime you get somebody outside world coming to wrestling and put a spotlight on. It's great. Logan Paul is good for business. They get more his eyes on the show for people right now wrestling or boxing. So, honestly, yeah, it's smart. Yeah, if other wrestlers are happy with it, they'll ever say, Miss Smart, the important thing is selling tickets. That's the important thing. I don't care if it's Logan Paul, Mandel, or Richard C. Boss, or it may be. It's stunt case thing. It works for my enemy. There's always going to be people who are going to be angry with Logan Paul and Russell. But it works. You can't worry about people who are getting angry for that. Understand they're probably younger guys, right? I understand when it's like Charles and Worlds and Massey, you get for some people, you never get it. That's fine, because you don't deal with that. You don't, you don't worry about people. You don't do anything like All I worry about is people that, that make, like me, and they get new friends. Fans. So Logan Paul got crazy number of searches I had a WWE Jewel Jewels, so we'll have to wait and see what Maverick will return to WWE television. So basically like Logan Paul's impact the wrestling board business and Jericho's praising Logan Paul for it. And that's a good thing, because honestly in the end of things, everyone should be able to work. Even paying people like like Logan Paul, influencers, stuff. You know, honestly Jericho's not that bad, you know. Anyway, um, this is what I got for this week's edition of Go Sully Podcast. See y'all next Saturday. Bye.